I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Cipher. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. For a free month of Treehouse, head on over to teamtreehouse.com slash show to join Nick and I over on Treehouse. In this episode of The Treehouse Show, we'll be talking about pixels, web components, the hamburger menu, and more. Let's check it out. <laughs> First up is this really cool article called Pixels Are Expensive. Because they're not on a pixel sale. That's right. Actually, Pixels Are Expensive is referring to the idea that pixels are kind of expensive to render in the browser. And it's a breakdown of how a browser actually renders things and somewhat of a reaction to an article called What Every Front-End Developer Should Know about web page rendering, which I believe we covered on the show previously. And this person thinks that it missed out on some crucial points. So while this article is pretty good, it missed a couple things. So for example, step one is recalculating style. And normally, this is actually a super fast thing to do unless there's a DOM tree with thousands upon thousands of elements. So it's really not something that you have to worry about unless you have a massive DOM tree. Second is layout, and then after that is repainting. And painting is actually where you'll spend the majority of your time in the browser. So that's anything uh, where you're changing a layout property, uh, such as color, background, shadows, and so on. Or anytime the geometry of the page has changed and the pixels are now dirtied and need to be fixed. Anyway, it's a really in-depth article and it also goes into how to avoid some of those performance bottlenecks and... Essentially, you're putting the pixels on layaway when you do that. Exactly. It's a, it's a really great article and I highly recommend that you check it out. Next up, we have a blog post from the Telerik developer blog on why web components aren't quite ready for production. Now, web components are just landing in Chrome 36, so you might be saying, hey, what do you mean they're not ready? They're out. They're in Chrome, they're yeah. in my browser. They're in Chrome, they're in my browser, works on my machine, I'm using them. All my websites, web components. Hold your horses there, buddy. Let's get into what's going on. So, browser support is obviously an issue with web components. Not everything is supported besides Chrome 36. So, uh, br browsers that have partial support are Firefox, but there are no web components at all in Safari or Internet Explorer. So, why not just use a polyfill? Because the Polymer team, Polymer is a project we've gone over previously on the Treehouse Show, so make sure you check out all previous episodes. Uh, the Polymer team maintains a complete set of polyfills collectively known as the platform. Now, those implement a polyfill for web components, but there can be some issues when working with these polyfills. What are those issues? Well, let's take a look at one of them, which is actually pretty interesting. So web components implement something called the shadow DOM. This is going to be a different DOM than what is being shown on the page and is specific to each individual web component. So what happens when you have a shadow DOM where there is something like an H1 tag that is within this shadow DOM? What does the query selector all return if this is not on the page? Well, in a browser where that is not supported, it returns zero because it is not yet on the page. However, if you are using a polyfill, well, this could be just a, another element. So if you ran query selector all dot length, it should return one. But if you add Polymer's platform dot JS, this actually works. So this is actually pretty complicated when implemented. You can see this very large regular expression to check all sorts of different CSS comments and things like that. Wow, that doesn't look regular at all. And so we can go on and see why this stuff matters. Why does it matter? Well, not everything is supported in all of the different browsers. A great example is styling inside and outside of a shadow DOM. As we can see in one browser, it looks completely different than in another. 
So there hasn't been any sort of standardization on what this behavior completely does yet. So everybody is just sort of guessing at the moment and nothing has been totally agreed upon. Uh, next, polyfills are also pretty big. Uh, the polyfill library comes in at 151k of JavaScript, which, as we've talked about before, that can be pretty big for mobile browsers and especially slow connections. Anyway, I've already talked about this a lot. Make sure to check it out in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash gotreehouse. You can also search for us on iTunes, where the Treehouse Show, and don't forget to join us for a 30-day free trial at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Something we've talked about on the show previously is the Hamburger, hamburger menu. menu. Yep. Hamburger yeah. Hamburger menu. You know, it's pretty rare that we talk about it, though. I say we talk about it a medium amount. Hmm. Well done. The <laughs> uh, you may be wondering where the hamburger menu actually came from because it sort of exploded in popularity. It's this little three-line menu that you see on all sorts of websites and iPhone and Android apps. But where did it actually originate from? A well, restaurant in New York in the year 1900. There is this wonderful post on the Evernote blog called The Origin of the Hamburger Icon. And it turns out that this guy named Norm Cox is the one that invented it for the Xerox Star user interface, which of course is well known for being created at Xerox Park and inspiring what eventually became uh, Macintosh. And so here's a video that you can watch. Actually, I don't think this is a video, but there's a link to this really great video that sort of demonstrates where this hamburger icon came from. And something that was sort of funny that Norm Cox said when he was emailed about it is that they used to call it the air vent to keep the window cool and it made the icon a little bit more memorable as a result. But anyway, uh, pretty cool article. Uh, it's very short, definitely worth checking out, definitely worth watching that video to see where the heck that icon actually came from. Air vent, not as tasty as a hamburger. It's not. Next up, we have a project called Papa Parse. This is a JavaScript CSV parser, quote, for big boys and girls. However, if you are not a big boy or girl, you can still use this library. Now, implementing a CSV parser, you might think, is just as easy as calling split on a string in JavaScript. But if you have done that in any language, you know it can be a lot more complicated than that because there are just tons of different edge cases. Now, this library, Papa Parse, makes it very, very easy to convert CSV, comma-separated values, into JSON. You can parse local CSV files. Uh, this works in Node and I believe in the browser as well. Now, saying, okay, well, I don't know what the delimiter is. Maybe it's a comma. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't know what data I have. I don't know what users are throwing at me. Hey, that's okay. Let Papa Parse parse it for you and, and you'll be fine. You'll be, you'll be good to go. Or you can tell it what the delimiter, delimiter is. Doesn't matter. You have options. Hey, I don't even have a file to parse. All right, cool. Here you go. Just, just pass the file in. It's, it's fine. Wait, what? The file's not even on my server. That's okay. Throw it a URL. Doesn't matter. Pop a parcel, parse it. Anyway, tons, tons of different options. I cannot hype this enough. Uh, check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is this wonderful blog post called No More Put a Skirt on It. And it's from Molly, an experienced designer and teacher in San Francisco. And it talks about user avatars and how a lot of them generally look pretty generic. So this is a Google image search for user and you come up with either generic or neutral looking icons or icons that look like a male. However, there's none that are explicitly female, which obviously is not good. So what can you do about it? Well, here's a picture of a historical vacuum that we don't live in anymore. And here is this wonderful illustration that says, a man plus decorations equals a woman, right? Well, not exactly. And here are some wonderful historical vacuum examples of what that might look like. So here we have Smurfs, and here we have Pac-Man and Mrs. Pac-Man. And you can see just sort of basically the same avatar with some decorations like a, 
a hair bow, and some lipstick. Was so, this the 1800s? Exactly. Not that great. So here's rule number one. If you're going for generic, then you need to be truly generic. So Netflix and Twitter do a really nice job of this with their generic smiley faces or with their generic egg icon. But Facebook is definitely not generic, and it sort of kind of looks like a, a man there. It has sort of the same proportions as a man and kind of a haircut you might expect from a male. You can also differentiate with color and detail as long as they're not any of these things. I'll let you read about that on your own. One of uh, the things I really like, and I just mentioned this, is the weird proportions. I mean, when you just add those decorations to a weirdly proportioned uh, stick figure, it's just not going to look good. Uh, anyway, a lot more detail in this post. It's a really great post and something I hadn't really thought about myself. I think it's a really wonderful look at uh, how to kind of uh, diversify your, your icons and uh, make them a little bit better. Yeah, she really uh, attacks the issue head on. You know, she definitely doesn't skirt around it. Not at all. Well, that is all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. You can also search for us on iTunes. We are The Treehouse Show. And don't forget to sign up for a 30-day free trial of Treehouse at teamtreehouse.com slash show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile business, and so much more, be sure to check us out just like Jason said, at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.